As you can see, like many people, I've always had hoop dreams. But let's be honest, every shot we shoot does not go in. This is why you have to watch this message. Because we talked from the subject title, Take Another Shot. How to Launch Again. And really, we unpack the life of Peter. Peter, like many of us, has missed shots in life. He felt disappointed, he's felt confused, he's felt frustrated, but Jesus gives him an opportunity to try again. And I want you to know that Jesus extends the same opportunity to you to try again. You may feel like your clock has run out, you feel like you run out of time, but I want you to know that there's still time for you to make a difference and to do what God has called you to do. Peter responded to the word of God and he was able to have a net breaking catch. And I believe God is about to supersede your expectations as well. So you got to check out this video. And one of the reasons Peter was able to catch the fish is because he had partners. And I want you to know that I celebrate and thank God for you as a supporter, as a prayer warrior, as an intercessor for our ministry. You've helped us to go across the world literally because of your support and your funding. And I pray that my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. May this continue to be the best year yet. We'll see you real soon. God bless. Let's turn in our Bibles. I believe we're going to Luke 5. Luke 5, they have it on the screens. Luke 5. Luke 5. Read something like this. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw the water's edge, two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything but because you say so at your word I will let down the nets when they had done so they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break so they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Talk about a sinker. I want to begin a new series from the subject title, Another Shot. Another Shot. If I had to give it a subtitle, I would call it Launch Again. Another Shot. Everybody say another shot. Another, shot. another Shot. That's what I want to talk about. Um, because I realize that God has rescued our lives. And for many of us, God has allowed our lives to rebound. And when God has allowed our lives to rebound, it is our responsibility to take another shot. I believe it was Wayne Gretzky that states... You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And the goal of Christ is not your success. Excuse me, not your comfort, it's your success. You know, when we look at great rebounders, the league, we have to think of a couple of names. Wilt Chamberlain was a great rebounder. Yeah, he was. Kareem was a great rebounder. And Dennis Rodman was a great rebounder. And he said what made him a great rebounder is that every shot Michael Jordan sh shot, he expected him to miss. 
Now, now, I know that's your greatest player ever, but the truth of the matter is, if you're going to be a great rebounder, you got to anticipate the miss. This is why God, before the foundation of the world, could slay his son Jesus. Because he was anticipating that even though Adam was in the perfect environment, he might miss. And in case you don't understand, what sin is, sin is simply to miss the mark. Don't you look at me funny like you've never missed. In fact, Romans makes it very clear that all have sinned, all have missed the mark and fallen short of his glory. You know, even a good shooter shoots 50% from the field goal, but all of us have the ability to miss. The reason that grease that causes things to shut that would normally remain open called WD-40, that, that substance, the reason it's called WD-40 is because it took 40 times for it to become successful. And some of you don't understand that God is not in a rush as much as you are. That sometimes it's our successive failures that make us. In fact, the Bible says that a just man falls seven times and gets back up. You, you know, in church, you can't fall one time and people won't think you will rise again. But the Bible says a just man falls seven times. That word seven, that number seven is number of completion. In other words, God allows you to fall until he finishes the work that's in you. You have to know this by now that failure is simply an opinion. When we teach about God, we have to understand that we serve a God of re. Everybody say re. re. We serve a God of re. That means he allows you to do things again and again. When we look at the scriptures, we see God offers refreshing moments and times because he's a refresher. That means when things get stale in your life, God knows how to make it fresh again. I don't know if you've ever been walking with the Lord, but there are times where you go through a dry and parched land, where you go through a wilderness and you need God to refresh you again. That's why some of us are bored and we're not even engaged in church like we used to be because we need God to refresh us. And God realizes life can be hard and because life is hard, sometimes it'll make you hard, but he has offered to refresh us. I just said God sent a fresh wind on this morning. And then God recovers us, right? He recovers us. This is what he does with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve didn't know that they were naked because they were covered, right? But then God has to recover them again because they don't cover themselves correctly. They cover themselves with fig leaves, according to the scripture. And some would even say that it was an apron. That means they left their behind out. And so God said, I covered you once. So it's going to take me to recover you again. So he kills an animal, a beast, and covers them appropriately. That's why you didn't die for yourself. It was Jesus who died for you because it took a God to recover you. The coin could not recover itself. It took the owner to recover the coin. So God is a God of re. And I know some of you are spiritual enough. I know you like stuff like this and days like this. You like revival. But revival means to bring back to life again. This means that God is anticipating that there may be moments where you're alive, you die, and he has to get you back up again. Because God is not afraid to do it again. You even sing songs like if he did it before, he'll do it again. We serve a God of re. Then the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. To redeem means to buy back again. Some of y'all don't like that. God loved you so much, he bought you twice. 
Some people won't even pay you attention once, but God bought you twice because he doesn't mind doing it again. Look at somebody say, God doesn't mind doing it again. I feel like preaching before I preach, but I want to let you know that God doesn't mind doing it again. I want to talk to somebody that feels like it's over. God doesn't mind doing it again. I need somebody that knows God like you know the back of your hand to say he will do it again. If I had a church that would preach to somebody, I think we could have a service on this morning. I believe God wants to do it again. He's proven to us even through Israel's life that he delivers again and again and again and again and again. And the same God that delivered Israel will deliver you again and again and again. This is why you can't out the grace of God because he's got one more in him when you feel like it was your last time. We serve a God of re. Some of you trying to act like you on your first chance, but the truth of the matter is you just own another chance because you can't count all the chances that God is giving you. This is why the writer can say, if I had 10,000 tongues, it just wouldn't be enough. We said the God of re, re, he, he renews our mind, re. Re, he makes it new again. That, doesn't, that means no matter how ate up your mind may be, God knows how to renew. When he make your mind new. See, if I was old school, I'd tell you, when he makes your mind new, places you used to go, you don't go no more. Things you used to do, you don't do anymore when he makes your mind new. See, some of you looking at my old body, but the reason I'm still here is because he gave me a new mind. Somebody say new. So, so we serve a God of re. Re. You think I blew my time, but he'll redeem the time. We serve a God of. He'll give me my time back with some interest. He'll redeem the time. And you really can't believe in the Christ of Scripture if you don't believe he's the God of re. Because you can't even be saved if you don't believe in the God of re. Because salvation is the rebirth. It means to be birthed again. This is what Nicodemus asked. He says, Nick at night, he says, how can a man enter his mother's womb again? Jesus said, you're not going to be born like that, Nick. He says, you're going to be born from above. Because you were born from below before. But I'm going to cause a rebirth because I want to give you another chance. This is why suicide should not be an option for you. Not when you can be born again. Some of y'all said, Pastor, I just want to start over. Jesus says, I'm going to give you an opportunity to start over. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I just want to make sure this church is fundamentally sound. This is why we can get excited about the rebirth. He doesn't just forgive you of your sins. He allows you to be born again. This means you have a different DNA if you don't agree with the DNA of your parents. And whatever's born of God overcomes the world even. This means you have a different spirit. Because if any man has the spirit of Christ, he's his. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will raise you from the dead because you have a different spirit. Look at somebody say, I got a new attitude. I got a new attitude. And when things are refurbished more times than not, they're more valuable than what they were before. So God doesn't mind remaking you. Yeah, God, God doesn't mind remaking you. Sometimes the remix 
And the sample does better than the original because God doesn't mind remaking you. Because salvation suggests that we can be rebirthed. It suggests that we can start over again and again. It suggests that we can wake up to new mercies. Anybody want to do over? I'm only talking to people who make mistakes. Anybody want to do over? Anybody ever made a decision say, I want that one back? I want to do over. And God says, I understand that. That there are times where you need me to intervene so that you can do it again. So he redeems and he rebounds our life because he anticipated that we were going to miss. And so as we pick up this text, we understand that this is the story of Jesus as he's entering ministry. And he's passing by and he sees some empty boats and he sees fishermen cleaning their nets. Yeah, he's seen all of that. And he begins to teach in their boats because they give him access to their boats. And Jesus has a recommendation for them. He says, will you launch out into the deep? But before they launch out into the deep, they give God reasons for why it's impossible for them to catch. And I want you to know that that's like us, that many of us have faced some circumstances and some situations that have created strongholds in our minds that make us believe that we can't bounce back because of this. Understand this, that these men were expert fishermen, so they understand fishermen rules. They understood the rules as follows. They understood that, watch this, um, that there's no fishing in the day. You don't fish in the day. And then it says, no fishing in the deep. Some of us have so many reasons why what Jesus asked us to do will not work. Because we have become accustomed to the rules. Watch this, not that God put in place, but that man put in place. And man's rules are eliminating the miracle that God wants to work in your life. So before Peter can respond to Jesus appropriately, he has to remind Jesus of the rules that he has memorized. And the rules, watch this, that are creating limitations in this life. The Bible says that he's clean, clean the nets. And I want you to understand this. He's cleaning the nets because he has toiled all night and caught nothing. He's toiled. They, they didn't just show up to work. They, they, they were not AWP absent while present. The Bible says that they work hard. Bible says that they took it seriously and have you ever worked hard and gave your best effort and still came up empty that's frustrating when you gave your best and it seems like you're experiencing your worst toward all night and caught nothing and we're an expert we follow all the rules and caught nothing we followed all the rules. We followed the 20 rules of dating and still the single as we've ever been before. <laughs> Toward the whole night and call nothing. I've learned how to pray as a warrior. I've learned how to pray as an intercessor. And I prayed and have caught nothing. What happens when you toil all night and catch nothing. I put up a bulletin 
I got a new Facebook page for my business and I got a new Instagram account, but I've caught nothing. What happens when you toil all night and catch nothing? It seems like after all the books I read about parenting, my kids are still going in a contrary direction. I've toiled all night. Be honest, Pastor, I've toiled for years and caught nothing. It's frustrating. When you know you're in your assignment, when you know you're in your bag, and you've toiled all night and caught nothing. Some of us even go to church. I know this is where you assigned me to be. And I've told and I've tossed. It was a struggle for me to get here on this morning. And I've told all night and caught nothing. Got nothing to show for it. See, in basketball, nothing but net is a good thing. But in fishing, nothing but net is a bad thing. And some of us have experienced nothing but net. Watch this. The, the, the enemy is not afraid of your motion. He's afraid of your movement. And this is what some of us have said. Pastor, I'm tired of going through the motions. I want to make some advancement. I know you teach me that I can praise my way through, but I'm still stuck. And I'm going through all of the motions. You said I can give my way out of poverty, but I'm still stuck. And it seems like I keep on going through all of the emotions. I told you a lot of us are like Carl Thomas. We are so emotional. But we haven't made advancement. Understand this. The man that was by the pool of Bethesda, the Bible says that he made motion, that he was attempting to get to the pool. But somebody would step in front of him because he struggled to make movement. Some of us, we struggle to make movement. This is why I don't want this generation to come to church and just love the motions and just learn the motions. I want you to see that Christ makes your life better. Paul says, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me and I'm pressing towards the mark. I'm making progress. Paul says, it's in him we live, we move, and we have our being. And so God wants your life to be progressive. But what happens when you toil all night and catch nothing? Many of us, like Peter, for the moment, we're going to call it quits. Or we tore all night and caught nothing. When we got nothing but net. But I want to remind you that God is the God of another chance. I want to remind you that it's God's will that you launch again. And in order for God to redeem or rebound your life, first of all, God needs your permission. I said, God needs your permission. To rebound your life. This is why he asked the man at the pool of Bethesda. He said, would you be made whole? Because I need your permission to rebound your life. It's not always automatic. That's why some people go to church year after year, but they haven't given God permission to have his way in your life. And because you haven't given God access, your life remains the same. Because watch this, God is not a manipulator as much as he is an influencer. That means you have to give him permission. Peter does this. Jesus does not just jump in Peter's boat. Peter gives Jesus permission to use 
his boat. He gives Jesus permission to step into what's empty. He gives Jesus permission to use what's his. He gives him permission. Because for Jesus to step into the boat and to preach for a long time without Peter's permission would have been a violation. God is waiting for your permission. Have you been down so long? You don't even have enough energy to rebound. To bounce back. Yeah. I'm glad that Caleb had anointing that even after waiting for 40 years, he still wanted his mountain and he gave God permission to rebound his life. Because let's be honest, some of us have been in defeat so long, we become comfortable with living in defeat. And it's not automatic that we want God to redeem our lives and to rebound our lives. And so we have to give him permission. Because sometimes you can't be bitter and better at the same time. Sometimes you can't be mad and glad at the same time. You got to give God permission. You want to hold a grudge and God's trying to give you grace. And we've all been there. We don't want to let them go, but we want to let him in. What happens when God is on the premise, but he needs your permission? Say, Jesus, you can come in. And then not only does he need your permission, I might lose some right here. He needs your participation. Some of us are calling God unfaithful, but the Bible says that he's faithful even when we're faithless. So what God needs is your participation. There's some things that God can do without you, but there's some things that God needs you to participate in. It was Jolien Boampko, who was a runner, a racer, who raced for her country. She had just come in, I believe, seventh place was shot put. And the person who was supposed to be in the race dropped out. So she finds herself in a hurdles event, even though she's not prepared. You know why she's in a hurdles event? Because two of her teammates got injured. And she said that I would rather take an L for the team so that we're not disqualified than to save my pride. So she comes in last place, 30 seconds behind everybody else because she knew who she was running for. Even though she didn't win, her participation saved lives. And I want you to know this. God is not looking for you to have a perfect race because some of you have had to clear hurdles too. But he's willing to help you if you would simply participate. The enemy's trying to make you afraid to make an attempt, but you can't make a shot if you don't make an attempt. And so every shot you shoot in this season might go in, but it can't go in if you never release it. So this is the season you got to be willing to participate with God. God, if you want me to walk on water, bid me to come. I'm going to participate with you. Look at somebody say, work with God. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Can I get a witness? That this year you've got to participate with God if he's going to rebound your life. When you feel the tugging of the Holy Spirit, you can't resist them every time in 2024 like you did in 2023. This season, you got to obey him. When he tells you not to hook up with them, don't you hook up with them this year. This is why your life is set back right now because you didn't respond to him. But as you begin to respond to him, watch him turn your life around. This is why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding acknowledge him in all your ways and watch him direct your path look at somebody say, I'm trying to get my life back together 
But you've got to work with God. The, the devil's in my finances, God. God says, when you work with me, that means you can't buy everything you see. That means just because it's on sale doesn't mean it's on sale for you. Oh, y'all don't like that type of preaching. That you're going to have to have discipline this year. You can't buy everything that glitter because everything that glitter is not gold. When you walk through the mall, you got to say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I'm window shopping now because the next time I buy a shirt, I don't want to buy a shirt on credit. I want to pay cash. You got to work with God this year. You got to work with God this year. You got to work with God. When it gets heated, you got to look for the way of escape. You got to work with God. He'll make a way of escape if you look for it. See, you always taking the bait. That's the problem. That's the problem. You keep on taking the bait. But this year, you got to work with God. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and I keep getting a bad doctor's report. He said, will you work with me? You can't drink a two liter every night. You got to put that away and get you some water. Will you work with me? Will you work with me? You can't eat a whole box of Little Debbie's every night. Will you work with me? I'm trying to rebound your life from destruction, but you won't work with me. Work with me. Will you work with me? I need your participation. Yeah. Peter toiled all night and caught nothing. And we fished all night. And caught nothing before. But watch this. I love Peter. Peter says it's a group project. We've toiled all night. And caught nothing. But at your word, I will let down my nets. We've toiled all night. But at your word, I will let down my nets. You got to know that you have influence. And I came to prophesy to somebody that the decisions you make today is going to influence everybody around you. My family toured all night, but I'm going to let down my net as the head of the household. And God's going to bless my entire family because I'm willing to let down my nets. Is anybody about to bust a move because you got a word from God? I know our money is funny and our change is strange, but you said give and it shall be given back to me. So at your word, I'm going to let down my... I got a word. I know the economy is not what it should be, but you told me to launch into a business. So at your word, I'm going to let down my neck and I'm going to pay my mama's house off. I'm going to pay my nephew's college tuition because at your word, I'm going to let down. Look at somebody say, you got to participate. Sometimes you letting down your net is filling out an application. Sometimes letting down your net is going back to school. Sometimes letting down your net is getting a gym membership. But at your word. Not out of my feelings. Not out of my impulse. But at your word. I'm going to let down the net. Because the net that I let down is going to impact everybody around me. Watch this. All my partners are going to get blessed because of the net I was willing to let down. This is why you better know who you rolling with in this season. And you need somebody in your group that can hear from God. Because when they can hear from God, you're blessed as a result. You're blessed by association when they can hear from God. Because one word from the Lord can change your entire trajectory. The reason they have a net breaking catch is 
because they were able to hear the word and someone wasn't afraid to let down their nets, even though it went against all the fishing rules. This is why we have to be a Bible teaching church. Because man-made rules will keep you bound unnecessarily. If he would have kept the conviction, we don't fish in the day, he would have been broke. If he would have kept the conviction, we don't go into the deep, he would have stayed broke. But he said, I hear your word. And though your word didn't come to me at a convenient time, I'm going to obey your word and believe you for a miracle. So God needs your participation. I said, God needs your participation. I only have about five more minutes in me, so I hope you're ready to close. God needs your participation. And then God needs to change your position. Yeah, God needs to change your, your, your position. See, this is the first time I sing this chord. Um, but God needs your, your position. Right, right. You've been shooting from here and been missing. And been missing. And been missing. You, you've been doing your best. Shooting the best way you know how doing layups. But I remember a couple of years ago, a, a man from Golden State by the name of Steph Curry changed the game. According to the rules, you only take three pointers when you need them. No, no. A good shot is not behind the three point line. A good shot help, happens up close. But Steph was willing to step out. Now, I'm not preaching Golden State. We still have Hope Laker Nation. <laughs> but what happened is, he starts shooting behind the line. And he made a shot. And like, you can't do it again. And then he made another shot. Like, you can't do it again. Then he made another shot. You can't do it again. You can't make another shot. A whole season through, you can't do it again. He wins a championship from his shot. You can't do it again. Then he wins another championship from his shot. You can't do it again. And he wins four championships from shooting from deep. But what happens is the other people start seeing his success for what he did from deep. And they said, hold up, maybe we're shooting too close. So now the whole league has changed. People are not settling for layups in two points. Why settle for two when I can have three? So now this is a 3D league. God's saying the reason I allow some of you to miss your shots is because you're shooting too close. But if you step out behind the line, I'm going to give you the ability to launch your shot from deep. Don't worry about spending too much time in prayer. Some of you feel like you're too deep, but the reality is you're not deep enough. God wants to give you double for your trouble. Here you only get two points, but out here you get three points. Look at somebody say, I'm about to launch from deep. You got to say it like you mean it. I'm about to launch from deep. I'm about to believe God for something big. Because now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think. And just like Steph believes it's going to go in, I believe that the next shot I shoot is going to go in. If he did it for Peter, he can do it for me. If that's your testimony, I want you to give God some praise right where you are. I dare you to launch a shot up from deep. The devil had you afraid. You about to have a shot clock violation. Your time is about to run out. But I dare you to put one up from deep. Hallelujah. 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 God's about to give you three-point victory. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. Because God is faithful. I 
I know what some of you say, you say, Pastor, what have I missed? What have I missed? Well, launch again. What if I came up empty? Well, launch again. Look at somebody say, launch again. What if my relationship came up empty? Launch again. What if my business came up empty? Launch again. What if my faith came up empty? Because if he did it before, he can do it. Give God some praise. This is why, Evangel, we can't play it safe. We've always lost for deep. We buy land that doesn't perk. That's deep. We sold 2037 cent when it's our last. That's deep. Some of you are shooting too close. That's why you're missing. I'm not just trying to pay the mortgage at this church. That's paid off. Pastor, that's too deep, but he's able. somebody say change your position change your position you're too close why don't you believe God for something great why don't you launch out from the deep why don't you launch out because we walk by faith and not by sight and God is able pastor 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 I'm too far out but you can still make it I'm in my sin but you can ask for forgiveness and get back to life I paid the launch for It's just a prayer. Well, God answers prayer. I did a lot. I got me out here. God's got to change your position. Curry like many of us. If he launched from two points like everybody else. But because of what he felt was his disadvantage, his size, he learned to launch from deep. Because it's less defenders out deep. But the more he shoots from deep, the more defenders start traveling out there with him. And I came here to tell you that God's going to use your disadvantage as an advantage if you would just launch from deep. He's trying to change your position. You're launching from the place you've always known. Your com- this is your comfort zone. But it took somebody that was willing to break the limitations. They said, not only am I going to launch from deep, I'm going to launch again after a failure. Can you launch from deep after a failure? Because maybe your greatest breakthrough will come right on the heels of your greatest breakdown. Launch for deep. Can I give you another scripture? Remember Acts 12? They prayed that Philip, oh James, would be released from jail. James is killed. But they still launch another prayer from deep. And Peter gets out. Sometimes God wants to see when you launch again. What if they would have been so defeated they didn't send another prayer up? And the thing about it is they didn't even have to go get Peter out of jail. Peter came and knocked on their door. Can I prophesy to somebody that this next miracle you're not going to have to go looking for it. It's going to come and knock on your door. Why? Because you launched again. You had every reason to clean your nets and walk away but you launched again. Somebody's marriage is about to be better than it's ever been before because you launched again. You could have went to divorce court but you decided to launch again. Somebody's business, they laughed at you but now they're going to borrow from you because you're about to launch again. Because God is the God of re. He can do it again. 
every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today, you say, Pastor, you know what? Before I believe God to do all of what you spoke of, I need to rededicate my life. I need to recommit my life. I need to release my life into the hands of Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can rebound my life. It's my responsibility to take the shot, but it's his responsibility to rebound me. And today I need God to recover me, to help me to bounce back. And I'm not afraid to make it public that I need Jesus because there's no one in this sanctuary who's exempt from that. No one online that's exempt from that. And if you hear that, you say, Pastor, you're talking to me. I want you just to raise your hand wherever you are. I want to pray for you wherever you are. I see that hand. God bless you. I see those hands over there. God bless you. I see those hands. Raise it high. Raise it high. I see that hand right there. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Even in the balcony, I see those hands. God bless you. I see the hands all over the sanctuary. Oh, man. Because when you raise your hands, you're reaching to Jesus who can save you. I just want you to repeat after me. Say, Father God, I realize that I'm a sinner, that I've fallen short of your standard for my life. But I'm so glad that you gave me an opportunity to take another shot. And I know, God, you're able to make the difference. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. And I declare from this day forward that my life would never be the same. God, thank you for rebounding my life. Thank you for redeeming my life. I give you glory. I give you honor. And I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.